from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons, they will speak new languages, they will pick up servants with their hands, and they will drink any deadly thing, and it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then, the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God but they went forth and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs the gospel of the Lord good morning Praise God for today, this Ascension Sunday. We continue doing this special time of our liturgical season. We have journeyed with Christ through Lent, a time when we focus on our salvation, we reflected, we repented, and we reconciled ourselves to Christ. We celebrated his resurrection on Easter Sunday, and we continue celebrating this Easter season. And today, we commemorate his ascension. The first reading tells us that after his resurrection, he spent 40 days with his followers, giving them instructions, many of which are not recorded. I wonder what he said. He probably reinforced what he had already been preaching for the last three years, opening their minds to understand better because now, you know, the resurrection, the reality of that was ever before them as well as his divinity. We heard in the reading from the Gospel of Mark and in the reading from the book of Acts that just prior to his ascension, Jesus commissioned his disciples, encouraging them to share the good news of salvation to every nation. He wanted every single person to encounter his sacred, compassionate, merciful, forgiving, loving heart. He promised them that he would be with them. And in another gospel, he said that he would be with them to the very end of the age. And then he ascended. I would like to take a few moments today, however, to focus on the reading that you heard from Ephesians, one of my favorite scriptures. Paul wrote, may the eyes of your hearts be enlightened that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. What are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones? And what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe in accord with the exercise of his great might 
which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. Again, may the eyes of your heart be enlightened that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. Now, what is Paul saying here to this church in Ephesus? And of course, what can we learn from what Paul is writing to apply to our own spiritual journey? Well, first, let me give you a little history on the people in Ephesus. Before their conversion, many of them worshipped a pagan god named Artemis. A false god, of course, because we know that there is only one god, and that's our Lord. Ephesus is in the present-day Turkey. But once upon a time, it was within the great Greek empire. And the Greeks, you know, had their whole story about gods who lived on Mount Olympus. Artemis was the daughter of Zeus and twin sister of Apollos. The people of Ephesus had a special devotion to her. They looked to her for prosperity, for their fertility, for good weather for their crops, and for success in hunting. But, and here's the good news, they were converted. When Paul preached there, Many, so many were converted that they started a church there in Ephesus to which Paul was writing. And Paul was encouraging them, this new church in Ephesus, to stay faithful and to remember all that he taught them when he spent time with them. Again, he wrote, May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. The Ephesians no longer belonged to a group that worshiped an empty God, a God with no promise at all. Instead, they now had hope in the reality of Jesus Christ, a hope that they would have the riches that now, because now they were set apart, that they would receive the inheritance of Christ, a hope that they would comprehend the greatness of his might, the false God, Artemis could not promise that. Why? Because Jesus had been raised from the dead. And he is now seated at the right hand, a place of authority with our created creator God, who was far above every principality, authority, power and dimension and is above every name that is named not only in this age but in the age to come that is the God that they now serve not some fake God a God that was conjured up in someone's mind so Paul prayed and hoped for this new church as they were growing in their faith and advancing in their spiritual walk and that's the historical context but what does that mean for us. How can we apply this letter to our lives today? I think Paul is saying to us the same thing. May the eyes of our, of our hearts be enlightened, that we collectively may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. We are assured of Christ's life, his passion, his death, his resurrection, and now, today, his ascension. We are assured that he is a part of the Trinity, the triune God that is loving and compassionate and merciful and forgiving and desires to journey with each of us every day, and we have faith in him. What is faith? The writer in the letter of the, to the Hebrews says, faith is the realization of what is hoped for 
and evidence of things not seen. A few weeks ago, we heard the story of, the, of Thomas, the disciple Thomas. Thomas needed to see the resurrected Lord. He needed to see the wounds in the Lord's hands. He needed to put his hands in the Lord's pierced side. And then when he did, what did he exclaim? My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, you believe because you see, but blessed are those who have not seen and who believe. Are we not those people? Those who believe and have not seen? And yet, don't we see evidence of the Lord everywhere? We see him in our own lives. We see him in the lives of others. We see him in this church that has now grown and been around for 2,000 years. When we, read, when we read Paul's letter to the Ephesians, let us be reminded of the Lord that we love and the Lord that we worship. He is the one who loved us so much. He left his heavenly throne to come down to earth. He came to teach us about the true heart of the Father. He came to draw all men to his Father. He came to reconcile all of us to his Father. And even though that path to reconciliation would require the sacrifice of an unblemished lamb. And to that need, Jesus willingly gave himself. He suffered terribly. He died. He rose from the dead. He taught 40 days more and then when that work was complete, he ascended to heaven to be at God's right hand where he now intercedes for us all the time. We just need to call on him. Paul wants to remind us that we are holy, set apart, that we have an inheritance in him. We are to be reminded of his unsurpassing power, his greatness. We have reason to rejoice today because Christ has ascended and is seated at the right hand of God the Father. May the eyes of our hearts be enlightened that we may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. Amen?